While training for the AACA7, I ran into three topics that seemed difficult at first. Number one is knowing how much refrigerant is in the system. It's not like checking your engine oil level. There's no dipstick. It's not like checking the coolant level. There's no clear reservoir to look at. Nah, 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 this is a whole nother beast. The AC system is sealed and the only way you're gonna look into it is by hooking up a tool like the manifold and gauge set. But the tool is not gonna give you an exact percentage of refrigerant in the system. You have to know how to read the gauges. The tool has a low side pressure gauge and a high side pressure gauge. The readings give you an idea of how the system is performing. If both readings are lower than normal, then you may have an undercharge. You may be low on refrigerant. If both gauges are higher than normal, then you may have an overcharge. Makes sense, right? Well, at first, it seemed like this would be the way to determine the refrigerant charge level. And oh boy, doing it this way would have made things extremely difficult. Add to that, conditions exist that can confuse you. For example, if both readings are higher than normal, then that must mean we have an overcharge, right? Not necessarily. Air in the system, too much oil in the system, even an airflow issue across the condenser can give you an overcharge condition. The refrigerant could be a specification, but a condition like that can confuse you. But in reality, ain't no one trying to determine the charge level by looking at gauges. Nobody's trying to do that. You'll simply push a few buttons on a recovery slash recharge machine and done. If you ever have doubts about how much refrigerant is in the system, just recover it and recharge to specification. Simple as that. So, how good are you at AC system diagnosis? If the fixed orifice tube is clogged, how is that going to affect the low side pressure? If the TXV is stuck open, how is that going to affect the low side pressure? Moving on to number two, fighting leaks in the AC system, especially the smaller leaks. Refrigerant leaves no trace behind, an amateur technician can spend all day looking for a leak, especially if it's behind the dash. When you first learn leak detecting, you get introduced to many new tools and to a variety of leak detecting methods. Sometimes the methods aren't all that reliable. If you're using a halogen leak detector, sometimes you might get a false reading. Sometimes the UV dye doesn't seem so obvious. And sometimes the UV dye takes many cycles before it starts to show up. But overall, leak detecting is very easy. What I don't understand is that some technicians don't even leak test. They simply recommend that you change a few parts. And when that doesn't work, they recommend that you change more parts. Once you properly learn leak testing, you'll actually look forward to leak testing. How about that? I said the same thing before about servicing drum brakes. So, do you need to recover the refrigerant when changing a Schrader valve on a service port? Is the accumulator a leak source? Number three is getting the 609 certification. If you're going for the A7, then most likely you're going for this one too. I mean, you pretty much have to. To become 609 certified, you have to pass a 30 question test, which can be taken from the comfort of your own home. The test seems difficult at first because the questions come from a 36 page pamphlet. 36 pages. Yeah, the pamphlet outlines many SAE standards that you need to become familiar with. Standards like J2197 and J2888. And yeah, they will be on the test. The pamphlet also goes over and the test can ask you about refrigerants that you've probably never heard of, such as R152A and R744. Yeah. So the test might seem difficult at first, but once you look at the pamphlet, you'll see that it's not that big. You'll see that some pages are essentially blank and some pages are filled with charts. 
you only need to study about 18 pages. So to me, the test wasn't that hard. Are you ready for the test? In millimeters, how big is the quick coupler on the high side of a R1234YF system? What colored cylinder is R1234YF stored in? And that's it. The A7 will also test you on the cooling system and on the heating system. I focused more on the AC system because that's the hardest part of the test. Once you got that down, the test is really, really easy. So have a good day, you guys.